Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription really helps build the channel. Even better, tell your friends all about the best wine show anywhere. Well, I've got another set of wines to review. This time, we're going to Portugal. If you've been watching my stuff for a while, then the name Esperam should be familiar. I've reviewed wines from this company in the past. My next four wines come from two estates owned by Esperam, Quinta dos Mursas and Quinta do Amial. I reviewed the Amial wines last year, so I, I get to have them again this year. The Mursas wines are new to me. Today, I'll be doing the first of the Quinta dos Mursas wines. It's called Asovio. The Portuguese language can be kind of tricky since it's a cousin of Spanish. It's natural to use Spanish as the basis for pronunciation, but no. Portuguese has to take a left turn somewhere. I've used the analogy in the past that Portuguese is, looks like Spanish, but sounds like Italian. It's not really the best explanation. It's just how I interpret it. But some of the sounds of Portuguese mimic Italian rather than Spanish. While I have a basic understanding of how to pronounce Portuguese, I'll be relying on Google Translate to give me reminders. Of course, I may stumble a bit. Like I've done in the past, I'll show the Portuguese word in the lower third to help you all know what I'm saying. I'm very sorry probably doing this in the video. So let's get some background on Mursas. So they don't have an exact year as to when the winery was founded. They do have the first written record of Quinta dos Mursas being in 1770. However, the property goes back to 1714 under a different name. Mursas is the name of the commune and the winery gets its name from there. As far as what Mursas means, I don't really know. The commune's website mentions something about being related to bears in the area, but Mursas doesn't seem to translate to bear. I got a result of moth from, uh, on Google Trans Translate. They also speculated the word was Mursa, which translates to muscle as in the mollusk, not like, you know, muscle. The winery's website mentions the name of the winery comes from Antonio Cardoso de Vasconcelos and other Mursa noblemen commanders, as in noblemen from the town of Mursa. Due to their continued presence in the uh, Covalinas farm, which is a Quinta, for generations or over a century, it became known as Quinta dos Mursas. The winery is located in the Sima Corgo, or the Upper Corgo area of what is known as the Alto Douro part of the larger Douro region in Portugal. One thing to comment on, you'll see a lot of mention that the Douro was the first demarcated wine region in the world beginning in 1756. This was for port wine and not for unfortified wine. There's also some debate on really who's first, depending on how you define all this. In 1730, the area of Tokai was officially created as a wine classification system. And in 1716, Chianti was created as an exclusive or protected vineyard zone. So it all depends on your interpretation as to who was first. Anyway, the winery quickly fell into disarray, even though they have records of the wine being of good quality. It changed hands multiple times over the years until it was purchased in 1943 by Manuel Pinto de Azevedo. In 1947, he plants the first vertically planted vineyard in the Douro. Right, so why is this significant? Well, as you can see, the Douro, most famous for port wine, had been exclusively planted using a terraced system. You have very steep slopes here, which can be difficult to farm. The Mosul is one of the most famous places with steep slopes of vineyards, and they are planted vertically rather than across. So it can be done. However, there are some advantages to terracing. It's easier to farm and reduces erosion are the chief reasons. It's not like you can't plant the vine rows to go up the hill. You could even plant across or perpendicular, but terracing makes this easier. In addition, in addition to this vineyard, Manuel restored the winery, adds more modern equipment, and revives the remaining vineyards. 
Currently, they have a mixture of terraces and vertical vineyards on the property. The elevation of the vineyards range from 140 to 290 meters, or 459 to 951 feet, with the slope being as steep as 47 degrees. In addition to the vineyards, the property also has olive trees and a grove with a combination of orange, tangerine, lemon, and other fruit trees. They also have about 88 hectares of what's called classified forest. In 2008, the De Azevedo family sells the property to Esperam. This is their first venture outside of the Alentejo region. In addition to the wines I'm reviewing in this episode and the next, they also make a port. Since 2016, their estate vineyards have been certified organic. For this wine, from what I can tell, the grapes come from a combination of their own vineyards on the property and vineyards elsewhere in an, in an area called Baishu. Not sure if they own those vineyards too. So here are the stats for this wine. The 2017 Esperan Quinta dos Mursas Asobio suggested retail price is $14. It comes from the Duro. It's a blend of 40% Toriga Nacional, 30% Tinta Roriche, 30% Toriga Franca. The soil is considered schist. The average vine age is 20 years. The grapes are coming from north-facing slopes. It's hand-harvested, it's destemmed. 10% aged in oak for six months, the rest are in concrete. ABV is 13.5%, the total acidity is 5.5, the pH is right in the sweet spot, 3.65, and the RS is 2.0 grams per liter. So something about uh, asovio, it means whistle in Portuguese. Now this refers to the sound the wind makes when it blows through the wind, uh, through the vineyards, through the vineyards. All right, so let's get into this wine. And I've seen this wine over the years. And I'm really excited to try it. Because of me doing all these Portuguese wines over the past, you know, know, like four or five years, I'm getting more and more comfortable with just rattling off the pronunciations of some of these Portuguese words. In my scripts, I will have my my own version of phonetic spelling but some of these words i've gotten familiar with so i no longer need to put those little phonetic 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 spellings in there all right so you know medium plus concentration of color um it's more red than anything else more and also kind of a ruby i guess now staining is you know medium almost medium minus you can't see through it. it's more opaque than anything else We'll throw a little uh, leg action in there, a little tearing action. Uh, it looks like, you know, medium plus on there. So let's get into the nose. I call it medium intensity. Youthful. It's almost medium minus intensity. There isn't a whole lot on the nose going on here. And I'm really sick of my nose in there. I mean, I get some red fruits, but nothing specific yet. Okay, so more of a raspberry than anything else. I get a touch of sp baking spice, but we're not talking a lot of new oak in here. You know, it's 10% just oak, right? Yeah, just 10% oak. Some fresh earth. It's really just, you know, a fruit forward wine, but it's not jumping out of the glass. So let's just go and taste it. It's much more on the palate. The fruit is really rich. Um, I'm going to say it was ripe fruit. Alcohol. Yeah, 13.5. Yeah. I mean, it's well integrated. It's not a high alcohol wine. It's, I guess, technically a medium plus alcohol. I get a touch of maple syrup. I kind of got on the nose. I get a little bit more on the palate. It's not a sweet wine by any means. The fruit is ripe and there's a lusciousness to it, but it's not like, it's not like a um, candied or sugary type of flavor of fruit it's just ripe but this is definitely a fruit forward wine or, or fruit dominated wine a little bit of earth on it but it's it's more fruit than anything else there's a bit of raisination to the fruit too that's i think that, that's coming through on here and it kind of does taste like a low alcohol port like a ruby port yeah because I, I i got a little chocolate on there like I can see having chocolate with this, except it's not sweet. 
Like you probably need some bitter chocolate, some like dark chocolate, bitter chocolate, not like milk chocolate. It would it would clash too much with this. It's a really tasty wine, and for what fourteen dollars, right? Yeah, fourteen dollars. I think it's a good value. I I definitely can enjoy this wine. It's I don't drink a lot of just regular Duro wines, you know, uh, port wines that are that are not fortified, but the ones I have had have always been really really good. This is, you know, more of a entry level wine for sure. I mean, the price point is, you know, definitely, you know, very friendly. It's not like complexity to it. It's really just a wine that's just it's just there to enjoy. Probably have it with some richer foods, maybe like a pot roast. Have you know a good juicy steak would go really well with this. The tannin isn't too over the top. You can feel it. It's, I would call it medium plus. I wouldn't really consider this an acidic wine. I think the wine is in balance. I don't think anything really is dominant on it. The alcohol is right in line. Uh, the complexity is medium. The finish is medium. You know, it, it's it's just a good all-around wine. And at $14, you really can't beat it. And this is totally a daily drinker wine. I think if this was not from Portugal, where it's less expensive to make wine, I think this would be at least five bucks more. I think it would be approaching $20 a bottle. I think it's got that quality to it, but it's still kind of an everyday, everyday drinker wine. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, and, to tell, and then tell all your friends about this best wine show anywhere. And until next time, drink some like red Portuguese wine that's not port. It's good stuff. <laughs>